Here we go, it's Joel Giovannino here, and welcome back to another video. And today's video is a very, very special one indeed. Now, in the current year, 2022, you, there's a, there is a very, very wide range of flight simulators and, of course, flight simulator joysticks and yokes available for offer. In the joystick range, you can start with something like the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro or the T-Flight Hotus X. You can move your way to the Thrustmaster TCA Airbus and uh, the Thrustmaster Warthog and Logitech GX56 tend to be at the top of our joystick range. But what came before this current generation of joysticks? Well, the answer is this. This is the Logitech Wingman 3D, released in the year 2000, back in the times of Flight Simulator 2000 of course, and when X-Plane was only in version 3 or 4 I believe, there's really not much information online about that. This joystick is actually not only for flight sim, in fact it was mostly used for other games, like racing games and shooters I believe. Now does this joystick work in today's flight simulators, and if so, how does it work? Find out in this video. But first off, let me actually say how I got this joystick. Now, when this first released, this joystick was was worth about 45 to 50 pounds. But as I was getting my hair cut in town, I walked past a charity shop which had this displayed in the window for, get this, just seven pounds. So I'm really not sure what the condition is going to be like or anything. I've barely opened the box. I just checked there was actually something in there and then bought it. But I'm, the first time I'm gonna be Plugging it in, taking it out, trying to install drivers is going to be today. Now, it's advertising that it's got force feedback, but of course, I don't think this is going to be supported in our flight simulators. So, we'll have to see how that works. So, with that being said, let's get straight on with the unboxing. Okay, so here we have it in front of us. You can see on the box that uh, the box is <laughs> definitely an old design, even got the uh, older Logitech logo there. But that's enough about the box. Let's just unbox this. Okay, so first things first, we've obviously got the, um... Okay, so first things first, we've obviously got the instructions here. We are definitely going to be needing these, because I do imagine this is going to be quite uh, hard to, um, you know, uh, install, especially considering it does need drivers, and I'm not sure how drivers work back in 2000. Probably going to have a CD in here, otherwise we are going to have to hunt the internet for the drivers for these things. Um, some more instructions, it looks like. Not really sure what this is. We'll get to that in a minute. And here we have it. Straight. <laughs> you guys can't see this. Let me just move this. I've got a little bit of desk space to work with. You actually have to plug the joystick in to the wall with a power cable. You do not see this anymore. Um, I mean, my steering wheel you have to plug in. Um, I assume this is because it's got force feedback. Um, but, you know, no joysticks nowadays don't even have force feedback, really. Not most of them. So you don't need to plug them into the wall. That's quite funny to see, to be honest. Um, I have to plug one. Yeah, I have to plug it into the wall. Um, but now, here we have the main item once we get rid of all this cardboard. And I mean, all of this cardboard. Oh my gosh. Alright, I'll just lift it up and over. Oh my gosh, what is this? Oh yeah, we can just break it off, I guess. Oh, there we go, right. Okay, here it is. Well, here it would be. I, I can see it, but obviously you can't, because you're just staying at this box with me. That's if you struggling to open it. There we have it. Wow. That is, um, that's quite a uh, old school design, obviously. It's quite cool though. I do really like it. And what we'll do first of all is we'll just get this wire out of the way and we'll leave it like this. 
and I'm gonna go get my current joystick that I use, the Thrustmaster TCA, put them side by side so you guys can see the difference. So obviously, this one here is the old school one, the Logitech Wingman Force 3D, and here is the Thrustmaster TCA Airbus. Now, first difference is, this one is obviously an Airbus joystick, so it's quite hard to compare. I used to have the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro, but I actually gave it away to somebody. Um, I gave it to a friend, uh, so I don't have that one, so I'm just going to use this for comparison. This obviously has many, many more buttons, as you can see, and the design is a lot less bulky, especially on the base here. Um, what I do quite, what I find quite interesting is rather than having this throttle here, um, you actually have the throttle um, on the wingman. It's actually here, so it's a little slide that goes round the base, which is actually pretty cool. Um, I don't know which one's more comfortable to use, to be honest. We are going to try and do some flying. Um, it has a yaw axis, but um, it seems to be much more restricting than uh, than um, than this one. And oh my gosh, I've barely got any input at all. Oh wow, hang on, let me put these both together so you can see once again. This, I don't know if this is because it's old, or if this is how it genuinely was. It barely moves at all. Now that could be because it's still got force feedback on. Uh, maybe you've got to plug it in or sort that stuff out. But you can see the travel range is so, so different with these two joysticks. Wow. This is going to be really hard to fly with. But £7, guys, you know. I did this video. I saw it was in charity shop. I thought this would be amazing for a video. That's exactly what we are doing. We're going to go and try plug this one in. See what we can do with it. See if we can run uh, X-Plane in it, uh, first of all. So uh, I'll jump to the computer now. Okay, so now here on the computer, and we are going to go and try and find out how to install this thing. I've plugged in the DVD drive, and files currently on this disk. Is it this? Uh, nope. Is it set up? Let's just try set up. Uh, yep. Whoa! Flipping it! You can tell something's old when I have sound effects like that, and they're about a billion decibels loud! Wow, um, anyway, with that awful noise, we want to install and modify it. Ow, and we want to do it in English. Wingman Software Setup is preparing the install shield wizard, which will guide you through the program setup process. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to time lapse this, because I'm sure you know you want to watch this. So, um, I'll see you when this is done. Alright, so that's stopped, so I can only assume that it's done. And all we can do now is head into X-Plane and try and fly with this thing. Now remember, I don't think that the um, force feedback is going to work with many of the games that I play, as uh, this was released in 2000, 22 years ago. So, yeah, I don't think this is going to work with many of the games. But we'll load up X-Plane and see what we can do with it. Alrighty, so it is perfectly showing up in the X-Play menu, which is actually really cool. So let's go ahead and calibrate it. So we've got pitch. Jesus, okay. That is very limited motion there. I can only assume that's because it's not... It's not... Like the force feedback might be limiting it or something. But yeah, that is very... We're going to have to accept that. Um, and roll again. Look how limited that is compared to your normal axis. But we're going to have to accept that. Your is, again, now that one's actually fine. Your's the only fine one. And then the throttle, of course, will be fine. There you go. So that's like that. Um, let go of the controls. Allowing them to the center position. Right, we're going to let go of our controls. Let that calibrate. Okay, we'll finish that. Okay, we're going to load in at uh, Welshpool, which is a little GA airport in Wales. And we're going to see how our flying is with this thing. Alrighty, so we're here in the Robin DR401 by Aerobus, and this is going to be the first ever time I'm using this joystick to fly. And I don't know how it's going to work, but we're just going to take out out of here runway four at Welshpool, set a little bit of flaps, and let's just do a bit of a. Oh, you see that? Ugh, that is, yeah, those movements are nothing like what we're used to. Um, like I said, I don't know if that's just because of the force feedback not being on or because it's old, or that's genuinely how it was. 
Um, the rudder's working. I'm not using anything to control the plane other than this, what is included in this. So this throttle, um, this rudder axis, and obviously this pitch and roll. Um, yeah, that's the only thing I'm using. Uh, so I guess we can just uh, take off and uh, try to do a circuit here. So let's go to full, whoa, let me do that. Let's go to full throttle. There we go. Just gonna use the wall, that's a bit sensitive. Just gonna use the rudder to stay on the uh, runway here. Good. We should get the airspeed live in a minute. Why are we going so slow? Is that full full? It is, yeah. Oh, forgot my rudder pillars. See, I'm going to move my rudder pillars out of the way here because obviously they're not plugged in. So I just forgot my rudder pillars weren't on. Um, I'm going to return, rotate at about 55. I think that will be safe for this plane. I don't really know. Um, there you go. Let's rotate. Oh my gosh. Whoa, -ho -ho! wow. Okay. Right. We're airborne. We're airborne looking lovely. Out of both cool. Okay, let's try and make a left turn. That's the easiest thing to do in this thing, definitely turn. But climbing, however, possible. But quite tricky, actually. Let's climb very slowly here. Look at that. I love this little airport. It's a very good freeware scenery by TDG. Um, yeah, it's quite a fun airport to fly into, actually. Um, I do a lot of GA flying around here. Although we should probably slow down, so we'll do that. Now, I am left-handed, and obviously this is a right-handed built joystick, so you're meant to hold it like this. Um, but I just use mine like this, and it works fine for me. Okay, I'm going to have to pitch up a little bit. Why have I suddenly gone really far in? Very strange. Okay, um, we're going to do a bit of a close approach here. I'm going to try and make an alright enough landing in this. Um, yeah, so we need to descend very rapidly here. We're not doing the best of realism here, but it's fine. Okay. Cool. There's our runway. Looking very, very nice. Watch out for that pylon down there. Oh, shoot, we're miles away from it, but fine. Okay, we want to bring this in too close here, as in like, we don't want to over or undershoot it. Wow. Yeah, I forgot how hard it was to uh, to pitch up in this thing. It's fine, let's just turn on to final. A little bit of rudder to kick us over. Woohoo! Whoa, we're coming in really hot. I can't flare. I, I just... Okay. <laughs> Oh, that was bad. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Let's go up again. Let's try one more time. So we can get flaps up a notch like that. A bit of rudder. And do one more, which you can turn left as soon as we rotate out of here. Loop back round to the runway. Even close to approach this time. So once again, I do think the approach will probably have something to do with our landing. But we're going to try one more aircraft on a straight approach before we do this. Uh, before we finish the video. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That was my fault. Okay, this is all over the place. But we're just going to focus on the landing rather than the approach, obviously. Bringing it in, bringing it in. And I'm going to just try to do a steady flare here. Hold it there. Hold it there. Hold it there. Okay, we're massively off centre line, but that is much better than our first attempt. Welcome back down to Welshpool. 41 FPM, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, one more thing, let's try and land this airliner, the Tolis A321, using this joystick here at Newcastle. Beautiful payware, Orbex scenery. This could go very interestingly. You can see the inputs I'm making that I would normally make with my TC <laughs> are throwing us all over the place. Okay. It's like, this is really difficult. This is really, really difficult. Wow. Alright, we need to arm spoilers before we forget anything else. 
just so that, that silly little thing goes away. Why aren't those on? This is what happens when you spawn on our Phenol to Commander Pro. Just fine though, we're just having a bit of fun. Alright, let's continue. Oh, we're getting low and there's like a hardy in there can do about it because the pitch response is so slow. Okay, there we go. We're back. Oh my gosh, it's just so wobbly. Like the slightest movements I would normally make to keep the plane steady. Send the plane all over the place, really. Okay. Hand on the throttle ready. Just hand on the throttle ready so we can get this when it's time. 50, 40, 30. 30 20, uh, correction. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my Christ. Wow. Reverses. Spoilers, reverse green. Sell. Try and maintain center line. Very tricky thing to do. Place. I just need to stop, I just need to leave the one alone, it's fine. It's still in the verse now. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is this is fun. Well I know what to do when I'm bored now in flight sim. <laughs> Sorry, 566 FPM. There we have it everybody. You've got to love it. 566 FPM. Now, as we wrap up this very, very fun review video, or whatever you want to call it, we will answer the question that I asked at the start. Can you use this with today's flight simulator, specifically X-Plane 11? And I'd have to say, the answer to that is kind of. Yes, you can use it, and yes, it does work, and is recognised by X-Plane 11 once installed the required drivers to um, make it work. Um, but is it easy? No, not at all. Does it feel anything like any other drivers I've ever used before that is supposed to be the most realistic, such as this one here? No, not at all. But yet again, for £7 or that kind of price, if you can find it for that price, it's worth keeping. And once again, it's old, you know? It's something to keep as a collector's item. I will certainly be keeping this um, on a shelf with all my uh, aircraft models and memorabilia and stuff so yeah pretty pretty cool um thank you for watching today's video i hope you enjoyed this little bit of a random fun video saw this knew exactly what i was going to do thanks for watching check out the blog check out the blog and have a very good day bye bye